Hello, everybody. My name is Al DePaulo. I'm the Partner Products Manager, and today I wanted to take a look at some of the 3D options that we offer in our Mill Professional Program and different ways that you can use them. And uh, in this example, I have a, a picture of a part that was cut by one of our customers out of the UK, uh, just showing a, a simple mold. Uh, that he uses for an investment casting process and uh, I think it's a good example to show some of the different ways in which you can use the software and uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get right into it now to begin with this model that I have here was designed in uh, SolidWorks uh, you could design it within Bobcad but it was easier for me to just make some adjustments within SolidWorks and since I own a license of SolidWorks uh, that's what I chose to do um, when we look at this, when I first brought it in, I did have to make some adjustments and I kind of want to go over uh, some of the different uh, geometry sets or layers that I generated to aid in the machining process. So if I turn off the model and I look at my parting surface here, you can see that there uh, is this transitional surface here. And I wanted to uh, finish that uh, area and make sure that it was really smooth. Uh, so what I ended up doing was creating a uh, separate surface uh, specifically for that. And then I also utilized a uh, boundary in order to allow me to contain the tool path to cut inside of there. Uh, if we look at our equidistant offset, this is a finishing strategy that I used uh, to finish out the cavity. I created a boundary for that via wireframe so I can contain the tool and have it cut inside of there. I also put my holes on their own layer. And then for uh, facing the different um, flat areas of the part, I uh, generated these uh, rectangular shapes here with dotted lines so I could use my advanced pocketing to clear out that geometry. So if we load up our first strategy here, you'll see that this is our advanced rough routine. Uh, this routine I'm using to remove the bulk of the material. Uh, some of the options that I used within advanced rough uh, has to do with the intermediate steps where it will go back and re-rough the part um, because I'm taking a quarter inch step down and uh, that leaves a lot of material there so when I come back and finish I don't want to have as much of an interrupted cut so I use the intermediate steps to re-rough those areas to knock down those steps uh, very useful tool and uh, definitely allows for uh, better uh, machining or more consistent machining. If I blank out that strategy there, we can look at our planar toolpath. In this example, I chose a single direction toolpath, so it starts at the top and then comes back down to the bottom and then rapids up. Uh, there's some options that uh, I might want to look at there. If I turn off uh, all my features and I just turn this one feature on and I post it, uh, one of the options that you're going to see here uh, in the code is you're going to see that this is done with all linear movement and though uh, linear interpolation really isn't so bad sometimes to get a really nice finish you may want to use uh, uh, arc movements instead so we do have a filter that you can turn on if you go to your posting and you check arc filter and uh, I don't know if I need to repost it let me check here real quick yeah, if I turn on my uh, arc filter here, you can now see that it will uh, cut with a radius, cut with lines, cut with a radius, cut with lines, and this will definitely give you a smoother finish, but it also gives you less lines of code. This has, uh, it looks like just under 1,500 lines of code for that particular routine, and if I turn that off and repost, we're going to see that we have uh, 1,800 lines. So. You know, again, uh, utilizing the planar toolpath, which is very common, uh, you can turn on and off arc filters as needed, and you can also control the direction of cut. In this case, I wanted single direction, so I set my cut pattern to zig, and then my lace angle, that controls which angle it cuts in, whether I wanted to start at the top and go down, or if I wanted to start at the bottom and go up. Uh, again, a really nice feature there. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, we'll look at the equidistant uh, offset. I think there's a number of different ways in which I could have come in here and finished this. 
Uh, the equidistant offset is the option that I chose. It's kind of a catch-all, and uh, it really it just comes in there and generates a, uh, an offset path uh, that is absolute to the surface, and will do a really good job of uh, cleaning up uh, the intersections in these different areas here. Okay, so that's our uh, equidistant offset. We can go ahead and turn that off. And then we when we look at uh, clearing the top parts. Um, of the, the flat areas on the bottom and the top here, what I chose to use was just a pocketing routine. And uh, instead of a traditional offset pocket, I wanted to do an open pocketing, so I chose advanced pocket. Uh, we, do, we do have an option for high speed, sometimes that's beneficial. In this case, I'm just taking like, I don't know, 15 off that face. So I just went with an advanced pocket. I have an aggressive step over. And in order for the software to uh, start and finish off the part, if we go back to a top view here, you can see it will start and finish off the part. Again, when we set up our boundaries, here you can see we have dotted lines and those dotted lines let the software know that the tool can pass through that area. I can come in here and pick this line and how you change them from solid to dotted is you go to selection mode, you click on what you want to um, edit, you can right click, modify attributes, line style, and I could change that to a dotted line if I wanted uh, or I could change it back to a solid line. So we'll go back to line style and we'll go back to a solid line. So that's how you edit uh, your geometry to make it uh, either solid or dotted lines. Um, so I do my two different uh, facing cycles here. So you can see the, I'm gonna finish my top surfaces. Uh, the next thing that I have is some drill holes. These just go in and, uh, you know, spot drill and then drill out the holes. Nothing too special there. Uh, the next thing that we would wanna look at here is our uh, pencil tracing. And this is going to come in and it's going to uh, cut the inside corners. This will just come in and clean up the inside corners of your part and give you a nice crisp uh, edge where that's located. So those are all the strategies that I used uh, on this part. These are all the layers that I used on the part uh, supporting geometry. And the next thing that we would want to look at is the simulation. So let's go ahead and load up our simulation. Now, if you are a standard uh, mill pro, mill standard or mill pro, you do not get machine simulation where you have the machine uh, as part of your simulation. Uh, if you are a uh, multi-axis user, then machine simulation is obviously available to you. Uh, if you are a standard or a pro user, uh, you're going to just have uh, this uh, standard uh, work view here. Uh, what I want to do is I, ha I have all these strategies turned off here. So what I'm going to do is turn them all back on. And then, you know, I'm just going to unblank the tool path as well. Uh, you know, when you go to your machine setup, you can right click and you can blank or unblank all your tool path and that will put a red X in front of the feature name and that's blanking out your tool path or, or hiding it. If you want to uh, open up just a, a single strategy so you can see what it looks like, you can go to this uh, sub menu here and just right click blank or unblank. The other thing you can do is you can do post yes, no. So if you say post yes, no, that will put an X on it. That means none, none of those features will post. And then what that allows you to do is turn on individual features to um, isolate them and, and to look at what's going on in the code here. So in this example, I want to do, I want to turn them all on. So I'll do post yes, no again. It turns them all on. Whether they're blanked out or not really doesn't matter. But uh, if I want to turn them uh, all the tool paths so I can view the tool paths, I can turn them on. Now to launch your simulation, there's a couple of different ways that you can go to that. You can right click on milling stock and go to simulation. I find myself going to modules and mill simulation. Uh, we also have an icon for simulation as well that you can put on a different toolbar. So uh, now that I have the model opened up, We'll go into our simulation view. There's a couple of different buttons on here. Uh, the one that I'm going to want to do is uh, turn off initial stock. I'm going to want to hide the workpiece. Uh, if you did have a, a solid, like your vice or something like that, you could show that as part of your simulation. The other thing I like to do is go to my uh, segment 
uh, for my toolpath so it only shows a, a little piece of the toolpath as we go. I have my uh, statistics here for as far as how long this is going to take to run. Uh, it looks like this says 32 minutes based on the speeds and feeds which were uh, preloaded by the default uh, material. You could obviously go in and, and dial that in. But from here this, uh, this looks good to begin with so we'll go ahead and run it through the simulation and see exactly what we have going on. Now, one of the things that uh, I'm going to touch on real quick is uh, you have a bunch of different tabs over here. One of the tabs has your move list, and what's really nice about this is you can move your progress bar back and forth, but sometimes you want to advance to the next uh, operation. Uh, in this case, we are... Um, uh, roughing the roughing the model out so what I may want to do is just skip through to op 2 and I can right click on uh, op 2 or op 3 and it will fast forward through this you can also slow your simulation down as well uh, so that way you can have a better idea of what's going on uh, if I stop this and I go to op number 2 it will show what's going on in op 2, op 3, op 4 Op 5, so this way you can progressively jump through the part. If you want to uh, start over, what you would need to do is rewind the routine so you can go here to restart and then play it again. Again, just kind of going through some of the different simulation options. You can speed the simulation up or down uh, depending on the horsepower that you have on, on your machine as far as uh, processors and uh, RAM. Uh, will determine how fast this simulation will run or not. But uh, again, just a, a real quick e example of what you can do with the, the Mill Professional software. Obviously, this is not the most complicated of uh, uh, molds, but uh, you could definitely get in and create more complicated molds using these same strategies here. Uh, if you have any questions about this particular uh, part or the strategies that I used or how to use them, you can always comment on my Facebook page uh, or the Bobcat After Dark blog, or you can email me directly. Again, I appreciate everybody's time here today. Uh, hopefully we've learned something and uh, look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thank you so much.